emotions I'm dreaming of the ocean As I swim above a riverbed Life is so fraudulent Towel off my guilt As I shuffle through the silt Draw a line in the sand Wonder where I should stand I don't want to be the one who's loose with all the bad news It's not mine to tell, I'm not a vessel, I'm a shell For Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and I'm here with you today with a little vlog. I thought it was about time I did a little vlog for YouTube. Um, if this is your first time joining me, the majority of my vlogs are now over on Patreon, but I still want to do the occasional little lifey video with you guys over here because I know not all of you can access Patreon at the moment. So here we are with a vlog. I thought today would be a really good day to vlog <clears throat> because it is my long day, <laughs> which basically means the kids are in after school club, so I don't have to pick them up till five o'clock. And it's been an extra long day today because we were up at 6.30 which is the earliest we've gotten up in a long time, but I had the best morning, honestly. I started my day with 20 minutes, drinking my coffee, having a little scroll on my phone, really, really chilled while the kids chilled too. There was no rushing. There was no trying to get out the door as fast as possible. I left the house clean and tidy and it was just, yeah, a lovely start to the morning. And then I went swimming, which is a new kind of part of my routine and hence why we've still got slightly wet hair. Um, I started swimming a couple of weeks ago as a kind of tentative step towards exercising again. I've tried many times since recovering from my eating disorders to um, get back into exercising but and so far it's just triggered me so I've stopped again but this time seems to be going all right so far. I've been talking to my therapist a lot about it and kind of checking in and yeah making sure we're there for the right reasons and I'm really really enjoying it. There's just there are just so many things about it that I love. One, I never really swam before, so I don't have any negative associations with it. And I really love how it is, how I feel weightless. I'm so, like the last thing I'm thinking about is my body. And it's almost like I don't feel like I'm exercising when I'm in the water. It's only when I get out and I realize I'm a bit out of breath and my arms ache and all this kind of stuff that I realize I've actually been exercising. So. So far it's been so wonderful, though this morning I didn't check the timetable and there was actually like an old ladies aqua class at the same time, so it wasn't exactly relaxing because it was very noisy, like the instructor and the music and stuff, but still did my swim and I felt really, really good after. And I love that I come out of there, like clean, showered, ready for the day, rather than, you know, spending an hour in the gym and coming home and then having to shower and rah, 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 I could be in and out of that swimming pool within an hour and that is wicked. So that's what I did this morning and then I popped over to Sainsbury's to pick up a few bits. Shall I show you? Yeah, I briefly showed you. It's Halloween coming up and I am not really into Halloween. I'm into autumn, but I'm not so much into Halloween, but the kids are kind of starting to cotton on to it. And they've been invited by one of their friends to go trick-or-treating around one of the small housing estates in the village. So I'm going to take them in, obviously, go with them and just give them a little bit of a trick-or-treating experience. Um, and Penny can't decide what she wants to be, but I saw this in Sainsbury's and I thought it was so adorable. And it's technically a witch, but the only thing that makes it witchy is the hat. The actual dress itself is just like sparkles and stars. So this could be any type of fairy princess type situation. And also I feel like it could be Christmassy. It's just the hat that makes it witchy. So she might be into this. If not, I'll take it back because she does have enough princess dresses as it is. But it was just so cute and it's so her colour. She's always suited green. And I also picked up these for her. Couldn't help it. She's finally, she finally now lets me do her hair properly every day for school. It stays in all day. But because we're growing out her fringe, we have to clip it back. So I thought these would be lovely. Like she's just, she's just going to love them. And these will come out 
every year. And then finally, I made not my first Christmas purchase of the year, though it feels like my first because the other one was advent calendars, which I always order on the 1st of September anyway, because otherwise they sell out. They're the Lego advent calendars. This year I got Lego for both the kids and my husband, but he doesn't know. And of course I've got my Yarny advent calendar. Zzz. Oopsie. But I saw this on Instagram this morning and was like, <gasps> A Christmas jumper I actually want to buy. Love it. It just says Merry and it's black and white and the least festive Christmas jumper you could think of, but I loved it and I thought that one is gonna fit right in with my wardrobe. I could imagine it with like a black skirt or I've got like a shiny gold skirt or jeans and it's just, I thought it was lovely and it's really thin and lightweight. And I bought it in quite a big size for me. It's a few sizes larger than I technically am because I like it to be big and oversized. And yeah, I'm excited to try that on. Hopefully it looks good. So there you go, that's my little morning shopping haul. Today, I mean, it's already lunchtime. This morning has gone by so, so fast. I was out of the pool by half 10, but then shopping and getting home again. I've just had some, well, I mean, it's technically lunch because it's 12 o'clock, but it kind of felt like breakfast. But um, yeah, it's already flown this morning, which feels really, really nice. But this afternoon, I've got some things to do and I thought I'd bring you along with me. I have got some work to do today, some admin to do. I have got to go through the feedback of the sibling sweater. But my main aim today is to get my cushion cover pattern ready for testing. Doesn't need tech editing before because there is no maths involved and I'm confident that my writing and spelling and grammar and everything is fine. There might be one or two typos here and there which my testers could find but doesn't need to be edited before the test and then it will be proofread by my editor before it goes live just to double check everything. Um, but yeah, that really needs to go into test because if I, am, if I am to get it out before December, it needs to be in testing now really so that I can give my testers enough time and still get it out in November. It will be mid to the end of November but in time for advent and in time for gift knitting hopefully. So that's the main thing on my agenda today and I'm hoping if I just sit down whilst I'm still feeling active and on the go and in the mood I can just smash it out in the next hour and then hopefully have some pretty major knitting time today. I thought I'd show you my current active whips because neither of them have been seen on YouTube yet. Um, good they are new cast ons. I finished my Moby and I have since knit two hip stats. One has been gifted, one is ready to be gifted for my brothers for their birthday. And I have a few new cast ons. <laughs> my kind of plain, just, you know, whilst I'm editing, whilst I'm watching telly, whilst I'm going out and about knitting is a sock in this super fun yarn. I'm gonna give you a close up. Isn't it so fun? Neon speckly goodness. And this is from the Wool Kitchen. This is actually ready for a toe and a heel, um, which I will probably, I would like to get that finished off today so that I can start on the next one. But then my kind of main whip at the moment is just a little personal project. It's not gonna be a design, you'll see why. Um, though it is kind of technically my own work, I've made it up, I've not followed a pattern, I've done my own grading. Um, but as you can see, it is basically, can you see? It's basically a Friday slipover by Petite Knit dupe. It's broken rib, slipover. But there are a few changes to it. The main difference is the gauge. I think the Friday slipover is, from what I remember, on 3.5 millimeter needles, and I just did not want to do that. This is on five millimeter needles, and the kind of edging is not one by one rib, it's double knitting. So I wanted that double folded vibe, but I couldn't be bothered to actually knit a double folded thing and then tack it down and all that kind of stuff. So I just did double rib. And I've got a little bit left to go on this armhole and then just the body to go. And I am gonna do it quite cropped, I think. I want it to be over jeans. I don't have any dresses, but I would really like a dress for it to go over. My mum made a beautiful blue gingham dress, which I might borrow, even if it's just a finished object picture. But it's gonna be quite cropped with a split hem. And I just thought it would be a really nice addition to my wardrobe. 
Again, I'm trying to love blue. It really does look quite blue on camera, but in real life, it's quite dark. It's the closest to black you can get. It's the Sanna's Garn Dawson Day in Sailor in the dark, and it's the leftovers from my sibling sweater and a strand of Sanna's Garn Tin Silk Mohair. And I can't remember what colour it is, but the dark blue. And it was all from Stash. I did buy a few extra balls because I was worried about running out of yarn, but I ended up using two of those extra balls for one of my hipster hats. So by the time this is done, we should have very, very minimal stash of that left, hopefully. So that's what I'm working on at the moment and you'll see some progress on that today. Depending on how much I get filmed today, I might film today and tomorrow because tomorrow I've got like another free at home day. I don't know if I'll go anywhere tomorrow, though I might go for a walk. We'll see how I feel after swimming today. Um, I feel like in every vlog I say, I might go for a walk, <laughs> but I never actually do. <laughs> so we will see. But yeah, basically I'm just bringing you along with me for the next day or two and see how we get along. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna crack on with this work. I'm gonna be a big girl and get it done. I'm gonna look after future me and then we can settle down and I might put some kind of autumnal movie on when I've finished working and do some editing. So thank you for joining me and I'll catch up with you in a little while. I hope you're having a lovely day. It is now 25 to 5 and I've got to go and pick up the kids in 20 minutes. So, my goodness, what an afternoon. That hour-long task ended up being a much bigger task than I anticipated. I had much more to do on the quilt cushion cover pattern than I realised. However, it is done. It was a slog, but I got it all done and I got it onto... Google Drive as well, which is a whole thing on its own because the formatting in the original document doesn't always transfer to Google and I have to put all the images in and I can't transfer the tables and it's just, yeah. <laughs> Getting it into Google Drive, into a Google Doc, is tricky. I also just had to spend some time working on my quilt cover because I realised I hadn't figured out the yardages for the DK weight version and it was still on the needles. So I had to be able to weigh what I'd done without needles attached to it. But I have solved a problem that I was kind of stuck with, which I think was holding me back from continuing with this as well. So I haven't actually worked on any of my um, things that I showed you earlier. <laughs> but I have made a little teeny bit of progress on my cushion cover. I've swapped out this colour. It was far too similar to this one. And I was a little bit worried it was a bit similar to this one. But on camera, she looks fabulous. My goodness. It's like 70s vibe. So yeah, we're all good now. And I can continue with this sample at my own leisure. And I also got distracted by the fact that I uploaded a video to Patreon today, but I hadn't realised that it had only exported the first 20 minutes of an hour long video. So I put it all up, I'd done the thumbnail, I'd put it on Patreon, I'd shared it on Instagram, only for someone to say, was it meant to finish at 20 minutes? And I was like, no! So I then had to go back in, export that old video again. Unfortunately, it exported the whole thing this time, and now that's uploading again. I have kind of changed how I edit and upload. It's something I've wanted to do for quite a while because up until now, I've been using my iPad to edit my videos and upload them to YouTube. However, my iPad is seven years old now and it struggles. And I'm just terrified that one day I'm not gonna be able to use it. And I'm terrified that that's gonna happen during Vlogmas, because obviously in December I spend a lot of time editing and uploading. So, also because of my new camera, I can't di 
upload the files directly to my iPad. It doesn't read the files that my camera creates. So I can get them directly to my computer, however. So to try and keep things as quick and simple as possible, I have started editing on my computer, which I wasn't so keen on because I much prefer physically working on an iPad, like touch screen rather than having to like move my mouse around on my trackpad. I might look into getting an external mouse because I think I'd prefer that as well. But now I've edited a video using the computer, it's it's all right. It's just not as intuitive as it is because obviously I've been using the same program for a long time. It's still the same program. It's still just iMovie, but learning the new shortcuts and how to do it has been a process. And then exporting it was a whole load of drama that has just continued. But we're there. And I think overall it's going to be a much better, more streamlined um way of working as we run up to vlogmas and i'm sorry i'll stop talking about christmas now <laughs> so yeah i've got to go and pick up the kids in a minute and this has ended up being a nowhere near as interesting day as i thought it would be <laughs> i thought i'd be filming lots of different stuff for you so i am going to continue on tomorrow and hopefully get some more exciting things either a walk i would also really like to do a little bit of baking just a little something maybe something autumnal because i'd love to bring the autumn vibes to you and then this evening i'm going to be knitting i don't know what i'm going to be knitting on yet um my cushion cover is calling to me if i'm honest i really want to crack on with it so it might be that who knows but we are all set up and all good to go to notify and send the pattern to testers tomorrow i haven't like officially test call for it but i've had lots of people say i would like to test this within my knitting pool and a few friends and i've just kind of said yeah no of course you'll be on the team so i now need to go back and find all those people and get the test started which is really really exciting but my goodness yes i'm sorry it's not oh sorry it wasn't more of an exciting day for you but this is kind of what it's like now and makes me a little bit worried about vlogmas but there will be hopefully a lot less work in vlogmas i won't be having a pattern release and a test knit launch during vlogmas though there will potentially be a test knit on the go but it's all going to be knitting and fun i said i'd stop talking about christmas and vlogmas what's wrong with me i just can't wait it's in my veins anyway I'm going to continue on with my day and go and get those little kitty winkles. I'm feeling a bit cold for the first time. I think I need a bit of jumper on. I'm a bit chilly. And then make the tea and snuggle down for the evening. So I will have a little catch up with you tomorrow. I'm very much looking forward to a quiet day where I don't have to leave, leave the house. And hopefully only a teeny tiny bit of work. But I do need to prepare the downstairs bedroom because we have a friend coming to stay on saturday and i don't really want to be running around like crazy then so yeah there's still stuff to do but a little bit more of a relaxed day tomorrow but i've enjoyed my day today it feels really really good to get lots of work done i think i'll be going to bed early <laughs> early morning and a big swim this morning so Ready for bed now, to be honest. <laughs> right, let's go and get those kids. People knew her by her will to make it whatever she put her mind to. Late night hours up the hill, serving coffee to strangers, talking about revenue. She kept dreaming of a world big enough for everyone. She knew it must rain before it grows She kept dreaming of the day Butterflies survived the wheel Even though she could knock down and never show It gets a little lonely All these empty rooms Watching the hours take on Do the eyes. <laughs> Good morning, it's Friday. Last night ended up being a little bit manic, a little bit crazy, a little bit eventful. <laughs> I actually ended up doing quite a bit more work and I 
created my document for the, why has it gone from my brain? From, for the Stella Cushion cover. <laughs> and I also <coughs> made the application form and contacted all of my testers. So that was something I was planning to do today, which was really, really nice, which means today I am like, I get ahead of the curve. And then last night I ended up not doing very much knitting at all. We had a little bit of an event. My dear sweet Jeffrey had a bit of an injury last night. I'm not gonna go into the details of it. And it wasn't anything too bad, it was just a plaster. But for him it was quite traumatic, bless him. And that ended up meaning I was with him for quite a lot of the night. There were lots of cuddles and stuff. So I actually ended up just having a bit of like an hour or so kind of chill out time after that. And during which I did do a little tiny bit of knitting, but only a little tiny bit. But it looks very nice. I finished the next little whoop, section of my cushion cover and completed the yellow. And I'm so, so happy with the yellow. I think it looks fantastic. Like I just, oh, I'm really pleased with all my colour choices here. And I'm so glad I went with it because it means it's it's all woolly mammoth fibres, obviously apart from the main colour, but you can get this kind of colour from woolly mammoth if you wanted to. But yeah, I'm so pleased. I'm really hoping to get this done now, but I can't decide what I wanna work on today, whether I wanna work on this or on my blue slipover, because I feel like I could potentially get a lot of that done today. However, it is already 11 o'clock. <laughs> it's been a busy morning. I didn't manage to wake up early today, so it was a bit of more of a frantic getting the kids out so I didn't film. And then I went with my husband to have his haircut. We've got a wonderful barber in the village and they're right next to the bakery. So we did the school run together, which is always so nice because he doesn't get to do it very often. Did the school run together, popped over to the bakery. So I actually haven't eaten my breakfast. I got an almond croissant. I'm so excited to eat this. I'm so hungry. And then the haircut took a little bit longer than um, I realised. And I also forgot that I had therapy this morning. So I got back with like 15 minutes to spare. Um, so I just had therapy and oh, it was a good one. It's really, really terrifying because I feel I am coming to the end of my therapy journey, which is amazing and terrifying. We have still got a little few things to work on, a few things that I've been protecting myself from, I think, for a while, but I do now feel like I'm strong enough. We were talking about my core today. One of the first things my therapist ever said to me was, you have no emotional core. Your emotional core has no strength. It's there, but you, you can't even do like a sit up. And we haven't referenced that since, but she did again today. And I was like, yeah, you're right. My emotional core feels so strong. It's get, And it's getting me through the challenging times. Last week was a really challenging week and my core got me through and how the way I'm living my life now is a way of maintaining my core. Like all my acts of self-care are like my emotional sit-ups. <laughs> and like acts of self-care, I mean putting myself first, taking care of my health, um, all that kind of stuff, and bubble baths as well. But yeah, so it's been a really, really good morning, and I feel like I'm talking really, really fast, and that's because I'm feeling really, really good. The other thing that happened this morning that's exciting is my dress arrived for my dear friend Lizzie's wedding, which is in about a month's time, just over a month. It's at the end of November, and the dress arrived, and I'm really, really pleased. It actually arrived yesterday, but I, the one I ordered was too big, um, because I've still got a hint of the old body dysmorphia, but I order the next size down and it fits. It fits well enough that I could wear it, but I do still think the fit could be better. So I've gone down another size, um, cause I want it to be tight. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a stunning dress. It's just from ASOS. It's like a black dress and it's gorgeous and I'm really excited to wear it, which is a weird feeling because normally finding something wear to big events is, was historically like one of the hardest things in the world. But it also confirms that I'm going to make the bright pink winter clutch, which I mentioned in my last podcast. I wanted to wait until I had officially chosen a dress before committing to the clutch. And I've kind of gone back and forth over what color to choose. And now I know I've got the dress 
I know that the hot pink bag is going to be the one and I just feel like it could be just the most fun moment for many many outfits as I'm kind of moving more into a kind of more relaxed phase when it comes to my fashion and what I wear. Yes, I will always be neutral girly. I'll always be like that black, white, brown, tan, beige kind of person. I'm really excited to start bringing color into it and I can feel like wearing one of my really nice chilled outfits with this bright pink pop of color in a bag. It's just, I can see myself doing it. I think it's going to be a good decision so I'm excited to get that started I need to read the pattern and kind of look into it and see how long it's going to take me I think Alexandra from Alexandra's Garn has made a winter clutch I think she's made two so I might ask her how long it took her I don't want to be doing it last minute but I would also like to potentially make a cardigan for the wedding as well I have a pink wrap cardigan, it's my, traditionally my wedding cardigan, but I don't think it goes with the dress I've got. I would like something a lot more um, basic because the dress itself is so wonderful. I'd like something cropped, I'd like something simple. The dress has little poofy sleeves, so one might do like a poofy sleeve moment, but I do have some black snuffnug and matching mohair it's going to be a november wedding as i said so i am going to need a warm layer so i thought maybe i'll just knock myself up a quick little cardigan that's like fitted on the body and is a bit cropped but has poofy balloony sleeves maybe because the dress itself is quite fitted it's floaty long skirt but it's quite it's not like lots of material so I feel like balance wise that could be really nice or I might just do literally like a, a novice cardigan maybe even a Sunday cardigan would be cute I don't know some form of black fluffy cardigan um, but if I do the snuff nug and the mohair then it's going to be a thick gauge we're talking like five six millimeter needle me, millimeter needle so it should be quite quick I'm oh, I'm feeling the cast on energy I need to finish some of the things before I cast it on. But I just want to cast it on. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of me jabbering on. I hope you're enjoying this vlog. It feels a bit like a behind the scenes kind of what I do when I'm at home vlog. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully with a little bit more knitting content it's kind of like behind the scenes of a knitwear designer maybe that's what i'll call it but anyway i would like to eat my croissant so i'll catch up with you guys later I've had of course it didn't go to plan and all the things I thought I might do I didn't end up doing but life just guided me through today and I've ended up having quite a nice day I did some more work did some more test knit related things and I've got a little bit more to do for my cushion test knit just to go through any more uh, responses that have come in and then send the pattern out but I will do that once the kids are home I think and then I got a text from my dad who's coming to visit us tomorrow. And I realized that I haven't seen him in ages and it was his birthday a few weeks ago. And I'd already got him a card, but I hadn't yet picked him up a present. So I thought, well, I'm gonna nip into town and pick up something from my, for my dad. I then also remembered that it's my brother-in-law's birthday next week. And then I also remembered that I wanted to get a little something for my nephew who recently 
was chosen to play for a rather exciting sports team but I'm not going to give details because safety um, and I wanted to do him a little well done gift when his older brother um, passed his 11 plus I got him a little well done gift so I thought it'd be nice to do that for him as well so it's turned into an afternoon of gifting and I thought I would show you what I got because I got some really lovely things that you might be interested in I went to my favorite shop of all time pretty much <laughs> Berry Loon. They are online as well, so if you're in the UK, you can order from Berry Loon, and they are stunning. Whenever I need to get a gift for someone and I don't know what to get, I will just always go to Berry Loon, and I will inevitably come out with something for myself as well. And it was great because I got everything that I needed and a little something for me. I thought I'd show you. So yeah, if you're ever in the Warwickshire area, Berry Loon is in Lovington, which is a town near to where I live, and yeah it's just fantastic even just being in there it's so beautifully cur curated honestly i could just fill my home with their beautiful things um the first thing i got which i'll just show you because it's on the top i got myself a little scrunchie it's a zero waste scrunchie and i don't know what company it's from i don't know if it's berry loon themselves that make it but yeah it's just a little scrunchie made with leftover fabric and it's gingham but it's like orangey pink and gray like not my normal kind of Thing, but I thought it would be so lovely. I've tried to do scrunchies before. I can't really do scrunchies on top of my head. It just doesn't feel very me. But I have been embracing hair back a lot more these days. Now I'm a lot more comfortable in my own skin. I'm more than happy to have my hair back. In fact, I really like it. It's really practical. And I thought it might be nice to do kind of like scrunchy in the back where I can't see it. So it doesn't like bother me. But it's like a cute little moment from the back of the head either round a bun or in a ponytail or something i just thought it was lovely and you know even penny might want to use it when her hair's a bit longer but there you go a little scrunchie and then now we have the book haul i went in to find a book for my dad I, it's what i usually get him whenever i want to get him a present a book or a puzzle um, and i know that he also loves food so it's really easy to buy him books and whilst i was there i also remembered it was mine brother-in-law's birthday and he also loves food and he is vegetarian so I had a little look in their vegetarian section and there were some wonderful books and I got a book for me that I couldn't resist. Which one's on top? So first we have the book for my father. It's called Bedside Companion for Food Lovers. My dad loves literature, he loves food, anything foodie. We're big Nigel Slater fans. He likes writing about food, not just recipes. This doesn't have any recipes in it. It's more of a little thing you can read every night. I imagine my dad will probably do a few, but there's excerpts from books. There are poems. There's just loads of little bits and it's all to do and you read one a day and they kind of move through the seasons and they're appropriate i really hope my dad likes it if not i'll have it back <laughs> and then for my brother yeah my brother-in-law is next i got him hopefully he doesn't already have it it's called the veg box i've got my receipt just in case he does have it and you can go and swap it for something different because there are so many to choose from and i chose this just because i liked the way it looked <laughs> i really like the illustration on the front and it says, and it's about 10 vegetables, 10 ways. So it focuses on an individual vegetable and gives you 10 recipes for it. And I just thought it looked, I just, I just really liked the styling of it. I like the design, I like the images. It just looks really easy to look through with loads of different things. So yeah, hopefully he enjoys that. And for me, I saw this book and I thought, oh, that looks fantastic fantastic that book I wonder oh it's got a great greasy stain mark on the bottom that's a shame um I bought it and I thought oh who could I get that for that looks so cool would that person like it would that person like it when's their birthday and I thought hang on a minute Laura you like it get it for yourself so I did and it's called strudel noodles and dumplings the new taste of german cooking and is this not my aesthetic it's by anya dunk and i'm so so excited by this i love german food my husband and i have been to germany well bavaria a few times together and just oh 
just the, the thought of dumplings. I just want to make dumplings. Oh man, I'm so excited. I'm going to sit down and properly look through this later on, I think. So that's my little book haul for you. So I've now got to do some present wrapping and I've got to go and get the kids in about an hour. I have barely done any, I know I haven't done any knitting today, not a single stitch. But whilst I was driving through the countryside, an idea could not help but form itself in my head. And it's the idea for the black cardigan. It's there. I've seen it, it's formed, I've thought through the construction, I've thought through the design details, I know exactly what I want to do and I honestly don't think I can see myself not casting it on very, very soon. I think, because I mean I technically have a month to make it, a little bit more than a month, um, but I just, I think because I know in, in my brain it would be quite a quick knit. I'm like, let's just do it. It could be done in a week and then I can carry on with everything else. I don't know. Maybe I'll be casting on. I have one other fun thing to tell you that I forgot to tell you about earlier. Um, my son's teacher came up to me in the playground and said, oh, we've been learning about materials. And when we were talking about materials, Jeff said that you are a knitter and that you use wool and that's a material. And first of all, I was beyond proud of him. <laughs> But then she said, would you be interested in coming in and doing a little 10, 15 minute talk to the kids about wool? And I was like, oh. First of all, I started to panic inside, but then I remembered it's a group of five year olds. And then the brain just started going and I started to imagine what I could do. I thought I could take in my swatches and talk about different fibers, maybe get them to guess where the fibers had come from. I, I, show like wool, like where does this come from? It comes from a sheep. This is cotton, where does it come from? A plant. Maybe there'd be a few surprising ones for them like silk or linen or flax or something like that. And just be like, yeah, just talk about the properties of wool. And you know, I could say to them, who thinks it's waterproof? Who thinks it's not waterproof? And like, yeah, just do a little quick thing about it and then show them some things that I've made with the yarn. Maybe probably take in Jeff's jumper. Um, or, or actually taking like the rainbow, uh, Penny's like rainbow yoke with my hand spun. I think they'd probably like that. That's fun to look at. Um, but yeah, how exciting is that? Massively, hugely out of my comfort zone. A long, not too long ago, I would have done everything in my world to avoid doing that. It would have absolutely terrified me. But I said yes. And she said, how's next Thursday? And I went, okay, thinking about it. Thursday is actually annoying because the kids have after school clubs so I'll be going into school to do the talk coming back again going back in to pick them up an hour and a half later but I probably won't advocate for myself and ask them to do it a different day now Thursday's fine let's just stay with Thursday but yeah baby steps <laughs> I'm gonna go and do a little talk about yarn to my son's class and it's making me very 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 happy Anyway, I need to crack on with the afternoon and I think I'm just going to ignore my jobs for the next 45 minutes and knit before the kids come home because once they are home, it's back to action stations. So, yeah, let's go and knit. Editing Laura here. I decided to cut out another huge long chat that I did. It's getting really, really long, this vlog, and... I don't want to bore you guys. So I've chopped a big bit out and you're about to skip to me closing off that chat. So just wanted to explain that little cut and the bit that I cut out, I'll include in the next podcast. So thanks, bye. So with that, I feel myself coming to the end of the chat. Um, I feel like this has been quite a chatty vlog, which is totally fine. And I hope you've enjoyed this kind of behind the scenes of my day to day life. There's not been much knitting, but that's the way life goes. There has been lots of working. There's been lots of quality time and I've just, you know, had a really good few days and I'm really glad you guys could come along with me. Um, what is coming up next, you ask? The next thing on YouTube will be a podcast, most likely in November. I kind of got into the kind of um, routine now of posting a podcast every month. That's what feels right to me, really. I feel like I've made enough progress on things to show you progress and something new rather than doing it too frequently and just kind of rehashing the same stuff which 
Weirdly enough, I quite enjoy watching. I do watch a few weekly podcasts, but I personally find it boring to film. <laughs> so I prefer filming the podcast a little bit further apart. And then at the end of November, there may well be a special video if we are able to film one. But then after that, it's vlogmas. We're so close, we're really gearing up for it now. Um, and then obviously there'll be two more Patreon videos in November as well. So head on over there if you would like to join me and if it's within your means. Um, if not, okay with me <laughs> it's optional but i just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me again i've had a really really lovely time and i'm gonna take you with me into my evening and show you what i get up to and yeah i'm ready to get candles on maybe a glass of red wine hopefully it rains all evening and i can just get cozy on the sofa in front of the telly and probably have a very very early night <laughs> so one more time, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Who told you that it was too late? When was it that you started leaning that way? Four tires cut into the clay. It dries up and now there's just one road to take It's cool.